Hey folks, Brian Havens here getting ready to try out my Garage Woodworks approved jig for uh, screwing up the mortise spaces on this cabinet leg. Um, so why do I have to do this besides uh, the fact that I'm biting off more than I can chew again? Well, this is no ordinary leg because what's going to happen is I want the cabinet to look like it's floating above the uh, legs. So the top of the leg here is going to be actually a little bit lower but I need this little nub back here uh, that's actually going to be supporting the cabinet. So, that puts my mortise face right here. I need to square that up. That's the first thing. Now, the other thing that complicates this whole leg is that normally a leg like this, this is going to curve out at a 45 degrees. It's going to curve out in both directions. Normally, the way you do that is you use a piece of 12 quarter uh, stock and you make the mortise spaces on the outside. That way, they start out square. But um, the problem with 12 quarter stock is 12 quarter stock is expensive. Um, you can't always find it in the species that you want. And uh, you can't always find riffs on, which is what you want for legs, so that the, uh, the grain on the two faces of the leg will look the same. So I've been experimenting with a way of taking that same leg um, on a piece of eight quarter stock, rotating it 45 degrees, which essentially gives you that riff sawn stock, and it's very easy to find. You can make this out of plain saw on eight quarter stock, which is pretty much easy to find in most species. So, uh, the idea of this jig is that it's going to essentially, if you imagine the cabinet made, and then you, you uh, turn it over onto its side, this jig is essentially going to hold this leg in exactly that same position. So that's the, exactly the right position that I, if I run it down the table saw, it should square up my uh, mortise space real nicely. Let's give it a try. one more to space. You can start to see the little nub that's going to hold up the cabinet right here and the top of the leg which is going to be dropped down maybe half an inch, maybe a little bit more. Now I took this out to show you that uh, I still need to cut this other uh, mortise space right here. Here's the first mortise space. That's where my mortises are going to go. Um, and then uh, this side still needs to be done. Now I could have used the same jig and fed this piece uh, in through the opposite direction, which means I'm going to be hitting this end grain because of the way it's tapered. So I'd rather send it in foot first. Um, it's a much easier cut. Um, so what I did is I designed this jig that I didn't even need to take this out actually. I could have just left it in and just I took it out to show you. Is that I've designed this jig that I can simply turn it over and cut on the other side of the table saw uh, with the fence on the other side of the blade uh, to get the other side. Let's do that now. how it's going to be. Let me turn it the way it's going to actually look on the piece. So this piece that's the top of the leg, it's going to be about a half an inch lower maybe. And this piece right here will stay completely square. And that's going to hold up the cabinet. There's my mortar space. There's one mortar space and the other. Need to clean that out. A little bit of burning, but no big deal. And um, yeah, pretty cool. Now, 
if you notice, I, I nibbled away at this surface right here. Um, I'm not worried about that, uh, the geometry of this one too, too terribly. It's mostly an aesthetic issue. I'll clean it up. But I want that mortise space to be nice and square uh, according to the way the uh, aprons and the whole frame is going to go together. So that's why I went to the hassle of making the jig, making sure it's 90 degrees to these two faces. And uh, yeah, this is cool stuff. Check it out.